Hey there, Sharon Hernandez here. Welcome to What You Up To Now, day 1895. I've got Santa's little hand on the Bible. It's actually a German Bible. Uh, swearing to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Because he is a by-the-book kind of guy. So, Santa, that was for Super Size Your Business. Our idiom today is by the book. And it's about, uh, well, that's one of the the thoughts about where it came from was the use of the Bible in court and the Christian Bible for people to swear on that they were going to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Uh, it's also in Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, as well as Edgar Allan Poe's uh, something about Rue Morgue. I can't remember his uh, murders at Rue Morgue. Murders at Rue Morgue. Uh, so it's been around for a long time. Uh, I have a different take on by the book, and if you want to know what that is, you can check out Super Size Your Business and listen to that. Uh, I am one of those people that tends to ask for forgiveness more than permission, depending on what it is. I won't break my code of conduct, my personal core values or ethics or morals or values. I'm not going to go against those and I'm not going to go against the law. You know, if it's the law, I'm going to follow it and abide by it. With the exception of when I used to drive the speed limit, I might have broken the law periodically driving a little too fast or a little faster than the speed limit. Not much, not all the time, but I definitely did. I'm not going to say I never broke any laws. That would be ludicrous. Uh, our annual challenge this year, the Get Your Goals Annual Challenge, we're talking about goals all year long. And just like last year when we were doing one thing every day that continually improved us, this year we're doing one thing every day to get what we want. And I've structured that according to a life framework model that I have used and followed uh, a, a seven-part one since, geez, the late 80s, early 90s. And then I added two parts following the pandemic in 2021 that coincided with the coaching program I was a part of. And I learned a lot and I wanted to share what I was learning along the way. And so I decided to actually add two more life framework areas to my structure, my goals, the life framework plan that I use to set my goals and objectives, to plan my life, to, to prioritize the things that I want to accomplish in a year. Uh, because I've had a goal setting process that I use for decades now, several decades now, sometimes more or less I would use it. Uh, but the last five years or so, especially I've, I've been pretty, uh, religiously tweaking and testing and creating a process that works especially for me because we're all a little different and we all need to learn things and then make them our own. We all need to learn frameworks, but then make them our own because we're not going to apply that framework. 100% exactly the same way the person that taught us that framework. We might the first few times, but as we apply it, as we learn, as we master, as we grow, we will make it our own. I think back to my college days and, and I studied uh, engineering in college. And one of the, I had an emphasis in quality, quality of leadership, quality of manufacturing, etc. And a framework that I learned way back then, and we were expected to use throughout our career was plan, do, check, act. I still use that framework today because I took that framework, I learned it, I applied it literally thousands of times on tests, on certifications, on audits, on everything in both my college career and my corporate life throughout 25 plus years in corporate America. And I made that my own. So now I can use that framework for any type of a problem or situation or challenge if it's appropriate. Uh, so that's the kind of thing that I'm talking about there. So today we were talking about our spiritual core values. We're focusing on spirituality this month. This segment of the challenge is on spiritual well-being, spiritual goals, right? So we're breaking it down in little bite-sized pieces so we can do one thing every day to get what we want with respect to our spiritual well-being. That's all I've got today. Uh, I think I mentioned yesterday, my daughter said I need to stop doing this. And I was thinking this morning, okay, I'm at 1,895, maybe go to 1,900. Maybe I'll go to 2,000 episodes before I come up with what I want to do next. But I want to do something next. I don't just want to, uh, I need, and I also need to find a way to document what I'm doing as I'm going throughout my journey uh, instead of having to write everything down and thinking I'm going to go back and read it because my vision makes it such that I am not going to be able to do that. Uh, I don't want to stick my unbelievably bad notes into a machine that can blow them up or read them to me. That would drive me crazy. I already have been pushing and resisting the, I've had the computer software uh, on my computer that can read everything on your screen for a couple of years now. And I just, I can't do it. I've turned it on a couple of times and I'm like, it is painstakingly 
boring for me to listen to every word on the page. If I could maybe do it on quadruple speed or something, I don't know. I'll have to play with it some more. I haven't looked at it for about a year now, but maybe, maybe one of these days. So far, the big screen TV is working, so that's what I'm using. All right, that's it. If I can help you in any way, ask. Otherwise, have a fantastic day.